Greetings, everyone. I'm talking to you from uh, my family's house as I'm actually visiting them for the holidays. This experiment was entirely unexpected and I didn't intend to do it, but uh, I have some powerful new data that I want to share as soon as I had gotten to a point where I could verify it very strongly. It's actually pretty jaw-dropping. Um, I'm kind of calling this, for the moment, the triglyceride carryover effect. And this is seemingly a bit unusual for me because I've already got a lot of uh, cross-data comparison and seems to have appeared primarily while I've been very low-carb and on a carnivore diet. As many of you know, I started on December 17th eating carnivore and meant to go for 30 days. Uh, the you know, the versions of beef are in many forms. For example, you can see I've got hamburger patties and roast beef and all beef hot dogs and, of course, steaks. Um, and about 10 days in, on the 27th, I uh, took my lipids for the first time. But before I show you that, I want to show you some possible confounders to what you're about to see. First of all is my sleep. My sleep generally averages around 5.5 hours a night. However, I'm a very efficient sleeper. It's usually around 94 to 97% efficiency, and I get uh, plenty of REM and deep sleep in that time. While this is not unusual for me, this is, of course, unusual for most people. Stress-wise, I've had a few developments that are really good news, but have caused me a bit of call to action stress, and I thought I'd go ahead and share that. Exercise, this is a little unusual because I haven't been getting my usual 2.5 miles of walking in each day while on this family visit. Initially, this was due to a bit of cold and snow, um, and then once this data started rolling in, I realized that I wanted to keep all variables the same, so I basically remained generally sedentary, uh, minus, of course, I'm walking around with family on, on various events and so forth. So this was it. This was my 10 days in uh, morning triglycerides. Now, my total cholesterol and my uh, HDL remains relatively stable throughout this experiment, so I'm going to kind of leave them off and mainly focus just on triglycerides. Triglycerides of 221 is certainly very high for me. I all but never see this kind of number. Uh, in fact, I think the only two times I've seen it was once when I was doing the 2.5 day fasting, and the other time was when I was doing the resistance, no, I'm sorry, the uh, white bread and processed meat experiment. So needless to say, if I, even when I wake up, for the times that I have done wake up uh, testing, triglycerides are usually below 100. So this was, of course, very surprising to me. I went ahead and reconfirmed it with a second test a few minutes later. However, about three and a half hours later, roughly, I went ahead and tested again. And my triglycerides were now falling below 100. This is pretty, pretty exciting new data when you think about it. I started, I woke up with this number. And then I end up just a few hours later with this number. And I had done nothing in between. No exercise, no food. Uh, only drinking water and mainly chatting with my family. So on the next day, I was very curious to see if this would happen again. And sure enough, I wake up with 246 milligrams per deciliter at, at 5.30. And the graph will kind of help show this a little bit better. Basically, it held for one hour and then starts precipitously going down. Basically, one, two, three, four hours later is when it finally gets to under 100 at around 9.35 a.m. All right, well, this, this means that um, certainly there's a phenomenon happening. It does look as if it's being reproduced, but the thing that kept coming back to me was 246, that looks like a bolus number, as in that looks like a triglyceride number you'd get right after you ate a fatty meal. This is, this is a whole bunch of triglycerides just now installed into my bloodstream from having just eaten, not from having just woken up. So. I then determined to go ahead and add a few more data points, uh, starting with, and you can see in all these columns, I'll walk you through it. I wanted to take the time of the supper from the night before. I wanted to compare that with the time that I fell asleep. And you can see that time between supper and sleep is about four hours, 16 minutes. I then wanted to determine how much I slept, five, five hours, three minutes, and then add that together, basically both of these together, so that we can see, we come up with about nine hours and 19 minutes from when I had my last supper, I'm missing a T there, and my waking triglycerides, as in if I had a bite of steak from the night before in my last meal, this is the amount of time it was between that and when I woke up and took my triglycerides for the first time. Finally, I wanted to add, um, before I went to sleep, 
what my triglycerides were hopefully just before I fell asleep. And in this case, I took that around 1124 and sure enough, my, my triglycerides, this was very surprising, was 230. Um, again, this is four hours later. So I'm sitting at 230 uh, milligrams per deciliter triglycerides. I go to sleep and then sure enough, I wake up with higher triglycerides. Even if it's uh, down by 80 points, it's still quite a lot. And you can see in the graph here now with what it was before I went to sleep. Now I go to sleep. Now I wake up at 149 and one, two, three hours later, we see that I'm now down to 92 at 8.01 a.m. So this is kind of exciting. Now I go ahead and add just a few more metrics for this next day. Uh, this time my supper is a bit later. This is closer to 8 p.m. And I fall asleep a little bit closer to midnight, but generally speaking, it's still about three hours and 50 minutes between when I start my supper and when I end up going to sleep. But this time around, I went ahead and took my uh, lipids just before I ate supper. My triglycerides were already elevated at 206. I then took a two hour later test and they were still elevated at 194, pretty much hardly changed at all. And then finally I go to sleep and it's basically identical to what it was right before I had uh, eaten. So uh, that's extremely relevant information because now when you go back and you look at it, of course I wake up with a little bit higher levels. However, this time around, um, it's a little bit serendipitous because even though I started two or six from the night before, and I wake up at 156, this time it takes me exactly one hour. At 6.16 a.m., I'm now down to 88. But the heck of it, I went ahead and did uh, one more test a little bit later, and it was at 94. Okay. So I finally managed to fit in one where I added a little more lag time. There were some complications to where I couldn't make it too early. Um, again, I'm I'm here visiting family and stuff, so I'm trying to work with them. And God bless them for working with me on this. This has been kind of a bear. But the supper from the night before is 1840, which is actually uh, 6.40 p.m. And the time I fell asleep um, is um, a little bit a little bit um, further along. It wasn't like right at midnight. But basically now you can see that it's 4 hours, 42 minutes plus time slept. This is a little bit longer. It's about 9 hours and 54 minutes. And... With all of that said, I end up with triglycerides of 108, and I wake up with 59. So kind of a boring graph here because pretty much I went to sleep with a low amount. I wake up with a lower amount, substantially so. All right. This led me, of course, to want to do just two more days, highly structured, and let's face it, it's one of the worst days this could have happened. Um, this, is a, this is New Year's Eve. This is New Year's Day. But it had to happen. I wanted to replicate this so I could get this out to you guys as soon as possible. Uh, we were already meeting at a Perkins where I ordered these three burgers, took careful track that um, I captured the data for them. Uh, and at 3.30, I had two all beef hot dogs. And then at 8 p.m., I had a steak. Now, the reason I did it this way is because since the last test I had, uh, I had woken up with very low levels of triglycerides. I wanted the very next day of the sister experiment to start with the uh, high anticipated triglyceride levels by eating the meal later. And that's what we're about to see in a moment. But it's sister day, January 1st. I did everything exactly the same, except that I had that same exact steak just a little bit earlier, uh, just a little bit earlier than last time uh, by about two hours. So this is the first sister day. This is the 31st. And as you can see, um, I went to I went to sleep with 172, and I wake up with 171, 178, and it precipitously drops until I'm down to 81 at 8:44 a.m. So one, two, three, four hours. Uh, the sister day for the day after, where I had a little bit more lag time, I unfortunately uh, failed <laughs> at fully executing the experiment as intended. So while it's true I did eat at six. Um, the time that I slept was a little bit shorter. The problem was, was that I, uh, even though I took even a, a two hour um, uh, postprandial, uh, unfortunately I fell asleep <laughs> um, at 1130, even though I intended to stay up until midnight. So I ended up with a half hour extra of sleep for the sister day. I don't think that that was too much of a confounder, but it might've been. 
I don't know. And I wake up at a substantially lower triglyceride number at 110, which then drops to 88 and then 81 by 620. So the experiment effectively worked really well. I was actually very happy with it. Now I'd like to take you through a few graphs that are going to seem a little geeky, but I'll, I'll really walk you through it. Uh, they're sort of important in order to illustrate the correlation. This first one is the time between supper and sleep, as in when I start the meal and when I actually go to sleep versus my waking triglycerides. And on this axis is the triglycerides, and on this axis is the time. And so as you can see, when you throw them into a scatter plot, as more time passes, my waking triglyceride numbers are generally lower from when I wake up and take them. Now again, this is the time between when I uh, start my meal and when I start to go to sleep. So often it ends up being a fairly small amount of time, anywhere between, uh, I guess in this case it was around uh, three hours to uh, close to five and a half hours. But that regression is actually pretty impressive. A 0.58 regression is actually very uh, impressive. Now let's go ahead and add the sleep time as well. So this is the time between the last supper and my waking triglyceride levels straight up. In other words, this includes both the gap from when I started to eat and when I started to go to sleep, and then includes also the time in which I slept itself. And this regression is even a little bit better. It's at 0.64. And I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be the case, that basically from uh, that the total fasted time is effectively what we're looking at here. When I last ate to when I get my triglycerides taken for the first time. Now, I wanted to go ahead and throw all of my data points, all 35 of them, onto one scatter plot. So this includes not only the triglycerides I took when I woke up, but it also includes the triglycerides taken for each hour following and so forth. And something definitely emerged that I believe is extremely relevant. Uh, to help illustrate this, I'm going to go ahead and throw on a line, this red line is being drawn right at the amount of time of 12 hours. In other words, before 12 hours, this is shorter amount of time before getting my triglycerides. And after 12 hours, it's longer as in post 12 hours. And then I'm gonna impose one more line on the other axis, on the triglycerides axis. So this is right at the 100. And as you can see, if the amount of time that I was fasted coming into any of these triglyceride readings uh, was more than 12 hours, then it was below 100 milligrams per deciliter of triglycerides 100% of the time. All of these, didn't matter what the circumstances were. If the last uh, meal that I ate, the first bite of the last meal I ate from the night before was 12 hours from when my blood was tested for lipids, uh, it, it was, in, in all of these data points, uh, almost a surefire bet that it was going to be below 100 milligrams per deciliter. And that's pretty relevant, particularly as you look over to the left side of this line, in that not only does it spread out a bit more, which is part of how it's starting to lose its correlation, but that actually we're talking a very small amount of time. Like this is at 10 hours and 48 minutes, and you still have plenty of these guys that are coming up a bit higher than you would have expected. For example, this one is close to 200 milligrams per deciliter, and that's it. That's it. Just one hour before, at 11, at 11 hours, as opposed to the 12. That's really relevant to me, and I think, in a lot of ways, this has sort of opened my eyes to. Uh, we've been giving advice um, in at Cholesterol Code, it's totally non-medical advice, but basically following what it was their original guidelines were, and that we like we like people to be fasted for at least 12 to 14 hours uh, before they get a cholesterol test. But there's many times where people said, well, you know, as close to like 10 hours, I mean, does that matter that much? And I've always thought, no, I feel that's probably not that big of a deal. As long as it's close to 12 to 14 hours, it's fine. This is the most compelling data that I've looked at that no, actually 12 hours really should be like the starting point. It should be a minimum of 12 hours or more if in fact more of this data looks to be the same. But I can't know for sure because this is still an N of one, even for as many of these uh, tests as I've done, which by the way, my fingers hurt so much. I've had to take so much blood out of each of them from like every side. It's just had to fit that in. This is this has been not the way I thought I'd be spending uh, the holidays. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about replication. 
Now, this is the first time of its kind that I'm doing this. Uh, I'm putting this data forward in a sort of preliminary manner because my hope is that some people will uh, find interest in doing replication. So if you wish to conduct this experiment, this will help to verify these findings. However, and this is key, this is not medical advice. Use at your own risk and abort at any point if you feel there is any concern or illness of any kind. This is super important to bear in mind. Consider having two or more days that are identical in what is eaten, ideally back to back, which you saw with my sister days. Um, it, that's the, the best way to do it is to have every single variable controlled for and then just have the one thing change that changes only in the timing of the final meal of the day. So that basically you're tweaking about how long it was from when you had the meal to when you get your first fasting test. And then with a device like a cardio check uh, or any other home lipid device, record the lipids upon awakening and continue testing each hour until triglycerides are below 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's extremely relevant and very important. You, you want to actually see if you can capture the slope as it happens um, with your data. Of course, keep careful track of meal times, sleep times, and testing times. That's all super relevant for this experiment. You have to be able to be disciplined to do so. And of course, please report this data back to cholesterolcode.com. Uh, we'll be reporting this in an upcoming post. I'm actually just going to do this video for now, but eventually I'd like to do a post which includes this video and includes much of the data that may end up being submitted for us. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you guys are all having a great holiday.